welcome back. Oh, so nice to be back. I'm thrilled to have you back. Now, last time you were here, you were about to host SNL. Uh, yes, with it you was two. the last time, yeah. Uh, and you were talking about how you had taken your mother to see Lady Bird in the theater, and yeah. you were very nervous about it getting recognized, and no one recognized you. No one recognized you. me. Yeah. No, nobody. And yet, here no. you are. It did not get to you. That did not sink your no, spirit. No, it's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, you I just don't... pushed right through. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> I'm fine. That's good. Yeah. I can tell. You, uh, but now, have you, have you taken your mother to see this film yet? Have you taken her scene? I took her to um, the New York premiere of uh -huh. this film, so everyone had to recognize me. Yeah. <laughs> Why take so chances? That, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I, there were posters everywhere. I would like stand next to them and go, that's me and that. So it really impressed her, I think. There's a, there's a lot of wigs and a lot of, uh, I always feel bad because this is obviously you're playing, uh, you and Margot Robbie both are playing these really powerful women, but yeah. because of the age it takes place, so much uh, wigs, so many corsets. Yeah, yeah, a lot of corsets. And when you've been wearing them like we did for months, you take them off at the end of the job, and like your shape has changed. Really? Yeah. Like I didn't have any curves before, and then I took it off, and for about a month I was like, oh. Wow. Oh, look at that. And then it's about Air a month glass. when it goes back to. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Went back to. Yeah. That. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a. Yeah, there you go. Wow, I, 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 it never occurred to me that it worked. It do, yeah, because it's squashing your insides. Yeah. And it's on, like, we'd have it on for, you know, 12 hours a day. Yeah. And it's tight. Corsets are tight. So, um, yeah, so it actually does change your shape for a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. This has turned into a weird advertisement for yeah, corsets. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, don't, don't wear them. <laughs> don't do it. Stay in school, don't do corsets. You... <laughs> Uh, you obviously have an incredible co-star with Margot Robbie, yeah. and they're it, really late in the film is the first time, uh, you know, obviously it's based on, on history, but you guys don't meet until very late in the film. And, yeah. Uh, and it's very powerful because these two, you know, women we've seen throughout the film, we haven't seen them meet. And yeah. did they actually, you guys put some thought into how much time you should interact as actors before that scene, yeah? Yeah, we didn't have any interaction at all. So we both decided um, in rehearsals. Like, I had heard, we've all heard about, like, actors staying apart for the whole thing or being in character and staying method and all of that. And I've never really felt the need to do that necessarily. But with this, I just thought, for Margot and I, we knew each other a little bit. We knew that we sort of worked in a similar enough way and we could we could kind of go for it. So we rehearsed separately. We shot separately. She did all of her stuff first. And then her last day was my first day and it was that big scene. So we stayed apart for the whole like first half of the scene where we're sort of hidden behind these sort of sheets in a in a cabin in the woods that we're in. And, um, and then when our you know, physical appearances finally revealed to each other. That was actually like the very first time we saw each other in character. So I had never seen Margot with the red wig and the golden age makeup. I hadn't seen any of it at all. So the first take was us just being like, <laughs> oh my God, and like really yeah. emotional. Well, there's a moment for those, you, uh, you drop the accent and you just say, holy, holy and Jesus, yeah, Margot. Yeah, yeah, you are, you. What's wrong with it's your It's jarring. Face? I will yeah. say, it's a really. It takes you out, it of, takes the first me out of it first second. It takes just for you a second. You wouldn't notice it really, though. Like, yeah. once you watch it again, you don't know. Yeah, but the first time you do have a You're moment like, of like, somebody... did she Irish and call her Margot right there? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and it really speaks to how good you guys are that you immediately go right back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, um... And she's like Australian in it, and she's like, hi, mate. How's it going, Mary? <laughs> you, um. <laughs> So you obviously uh, you had to have a Scottish accent for this, uh, Lady Bird. You you know you're from California. Um, your accent, this you came by this very honestly. Is it true that you developed your skill and your ear for accents because your dolls all came from different places? Yeah. Yeah. So I am um, an only child, <laughs> obviously. And oh, someone just went ah. Oh. Yeah, we thought that, sir. Um, and I would like. Basically, I would visit my dolls like every evening, like a soap opera. Mm -hmm. So there would be episodes. So I'd come back every day and I'd be like, what's Polly Pocket been up to today? And I had this mini figurine of Woody from Toy Story back uh -huh. when, when um, you know, fast food 
stores used to give out like really good toys and uh, this was one and I still have him and he was Polly Pocket's boyfriend and he he was American he was like generic American she was from the south um, and she lost her arm in oh, a God. car accident really because in real life I actually broke off her arm by accident got it so I had to rewrite that. Yeah. I had to write it you had to rewrite it in a way where you weren't culpable. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it actually worked out really well for yeah. the for the grit of it all. Yeah, of course. So. Yeah, I mean I think when you obviously when you're making a doll soap opera, you need things to happen. You need, uh, you, you need the drama. Yeah. And I wanted people to know like this is real life. This <laughs> yeah. you know, people lose their arms. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the thing about dolls. They live such sheltered existences. They do. Yeah. Plastic, they could go their whole will. life. They don't even leave the With house. With two arms. Yeah, exactly. They have two arms their whole lives, and then every other doll is like, oh, I'm always going to have two arms, and that's not the Yeah. Case. And so, if anything, it was a cautionary tale for the other. <laughs> I, and I think you said none of your dolls ever went out driving again after that. No, no. Yeah. It was, I'm glad I could just give something back to them. <laughs> so, uh, go see Mary Queen of Scots. <laughs>